stuff. Have you been wet on the porch? <laughs> Always amazed when it gets to be that hot, because it's like, wow, how hot can it go? <sighs> Clean up. Starting your day. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Have you ever gone on a cleaning rampage to straighten up your home or office? Did you enjoy pitching junk, straightening, pitching junk, tossing things in the trash? straightening objects and organizing materials so that you could find them when you need them. You may need to get on a Holy Ghost rampage and do the same thing with your life. Say, I've had enough bondage, I've had enough negative thoughts, I've had enough of the lies of the devil, I'm not going to have any more bad days. I'm not going to be discouraged, depressed, or despondent. I'm going to enjoy my life. Jesus is ready to help you live life to the fullest. Within reason, you know, I completely concur because a lot of times people, you know, do get into this kind of negative attitude, but I don't agree that you cannot be down at times and enjoy that or to participate in that or to even allow yourself that time. Because, you see, the one thing that isn't mentioned there about being either down or whatever is that to everything there is a purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, seasons and days, there is light and there's dark. There is a full range of emotions that we have, and they are designed and developed for a purpose. When you can allow yourself to be mournful, or allow yourself to be sad, or allow yourself to be down for a period of time, that can be healthy for development from God as long as you turn that to the Lord. Now, when you just simply get into a mood or an emotion and you just let it run you, no, of course not. Because, you see, besides your feelings, there is your spirit. And both of those coexist in your body. So, whatever is dominant is running your life. So, you want to have the ability in your spirit to control or to make decisions based upon where you're at and the circumstances of your life. For instance, if you are with people that are in a funeral home and they're mourning and crying, then there is nothing wrong with being sad. There's nothing wrong with being down. There's nothing wrong with allowing your emotions to participate with what the people there are feeling. But don't let it ruin you or run you onward beyond where it should. It's a time to mourn. And then once it's done, you exercise, so to speak, the, the spiritual being you are by understanding that death is a process of life and that it's not something to be ending but that there's a new beginning and that we can take whatever tragedy we think we're encouraged or going through and encourage others by maybe feeling what they feel but then also directing them in a different direction to move forward with their life and so you have to have the ability almost like to switch on switch off so to speak to be able to change your course when one minute you're you're feeling those emotions and the next minute you're able to control those emotions by the Holy Spirit in you. And God can do that for you. He really can. It's you're not you're never controlled by your emotions. It's just feelings. They change as quickly as a thought. And it's just receptors that are inside your brain that are making electronic connections, believe it or not. They affect your soul. But if you could change the focus and the attention of those receptors for a moment, guess what? It changes, doesn't it? It doesn't? Really? Watch this. If I was depressed and I suddenly smashed my finger with a hammer, that receptor of pain would suddenly dominate all my moods and emotions to where I would feel only pain. Because your mind can't conceive of more than one thing at a time. But then with that pain, if I'm thinking about Jesus, I could turn that pain into something different where I could realize and recognize the fellowship of his suffering or some other point. But the, the, the aspect of that, that I'm trying to describe is that it is a change that can happen. God can change the circumstances. For instance, to use a less dramatic example, 
one minute you could be depressed over your bills and as soon as you you know went home and you got a letter in the mail and you had a thousand dollars you know that paid for all your bills you'd be overjoyed but what physically changed nothing you see the input did the focus did one minute you're depressed over bills because you're focused on and the next minute you're overjoyed because the salvation was brought that's the point you can have emotions but you can also participate in knowing when what they are when they should be used and when they should not rule you never let your emotions rule you no matter what they are if you get too carried away in joy you may wind up rolling on the floor and barking like dogs or laughing like hyenas you know that's silly but if you control it <laughs> Then when it's needed, what a joy there is in Jesus. What a, a delight God is to be all-encompassing in all of our emotions and wanting us to experience everything that he has for us. And that's the way to live. Complete, being perfected, and lacking nothing in all your emotions.